Hello, my name is Reina, and this is another episode of Chow and Tell. So happy to be back with you after a couple of weeks away. I was traveling in Puerto Rico, uh, just got back last night, and it was a really interesting trip. Um, many perspectives, but and it's a beautiful it's a beautiful island. But the thing that struck me most, actually, surprisingly, was um, the rampant obesity and poverty that I saw there, and also an enormous amount of fast food chains, American fast food chains all along the highway. Um, and one of the things I personally struggled with a lot was access to fresh, healthy fruits and vegetables, which was surprising because the climate totally lends itself to that. Um, but for some reason, there's something about the, the food culture and or access, uh, maybe perhaps even education and some level of politics that seems to come in the way of there being a lot of fresh green vegetables and um, you know fruit available widely as much as I thought. So that was pretty surprising and I was really happy to be on vacation but I was also really happy to come back home to my kitchen and um, my farmer's market produce which uh, has kept me healthy and glowing all summer long through my pregnancy as well. It's been great. So, um, so that was just a really interesting piece of the trip um, and I have guests on today who actually are going to talk about access to fresh healthy foods locally which I'm super super excited about. Um, before I introduce them though I do want to just give one moment of acknowledgement to um, a Cambridge local resident who has been a great great inspiration to me and to so many hundreds of others for over 25 years one of the longest longest running uh, radio shows um, on public radio, um, Car Talks, Tom Magliozzi passed away a few days ago and uh, that was a big tragic loss for a lot of us but he has left behind a legacy of, of laughter, of good humor, of extreme intelligence and self-deprecating humor which is so Cambridge and um, has been a big part of my personal history and life and uh, Actually, also the Car Talk brothers, um, Tom and Ray, both have been big supporters of Food for Free, which is a local food rescue program, um, which I'm part of. So, so there's the tie-in. If you're wondering where the tie-in is, um, although you don't need a tie-in with Car Talk, because <laughs> everybody, I don't know much about cars, but um, I'm a huge, huge fan. And, and so we're really sad about the loss, but I think it's our moral responsibility to continue in Tom's wake. Um, laughing and being good humored and lighthearted about life but still super super intelligent and having that just carrying his torch forward so so i just wanted to say that rest in peace tom we're going to miss you and without further ado please welcome my guests who are going to talk about access to fresh healthy foods for all um here with me are kim Modeluski. <laughs> Modeluski and Margiana um, Peterson Rothley. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Great Thanks to have you. Us. Yeah, it's so nice to have you both on the show. I'm really excited about our discussion today. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me, and I'm sorry I mangled your last <laughs> names. <laughs> Mine gets mangled all the time too, so, so we'll um, share that common common bond. But um, tell me a little bit about, so we're going to talk about the SNAP program primarily and the tie-in, I believe, with the farmer's markets. Um, Margiana, you're with the Harvard mm -hmm. Farmer's Market, and Kim with the Cambridge... Cambridge Winter Farmer's Winter Market. Winter Farmer's Market. So why don't we start with you, Margiana. Tell me a little bit about your background and what you do. Sure. Um, so I am coming to sort of the local food system systems as a producer, sort of from a producer perspective. Uh -huh. I was fortunate enough to grow up on a dairy goat farm, mm -hmm. um, only about an hour south of here in oh. Massachusetts, and my mom is still a goat farmer. Wow. Um, and then um, I, after college, I actually started my own farm and grew about five acres of fresh produce and pastured hogs and chickens for wow. meat and sold to restaurants and the CSA and also at a farmer's market. So I've um, been sort of a vendor yeah. in the past. Yeah. Um, and then I really felt like there were some gaps in uh, sort of access to food mm -hmm. and marketing and distribution and learning with all of these new and young people who want to go into agriculture. Mm -hmm. So um, I began working in the nonprofit world, mm -hmm. uh, mostly with new farmers, helping mm -hmm. them 
find land and um, gain the skills that they need to be successful farmers in the greater Boston area. Wow. Um, and just in April, I uh, got a job at Harvard and now I work there full time and I coordinate uh, the Food Literacy Project, uh, which aims to educate and engage the Harvard community in the food system. Um, I manage the uh, student garden internship uh -huh. program and the farmer's market there. Okay, I, I actually remember um, we had, a, I was volunteering with Food for Free and they often have a stall at the Harvard Farmer's Market. Um, and I had met somebody who worked at the at the um, co-op gardens, the, oh, the Harvard yeah. Gardens, and so we had a nice chat about that. And so it was nice to have it come full circle when I when I met with you and learned what you did. Um, and it's really great. I also like the idea that there's young people who are wanting mm -hmm. to get back to local production and distribution and literacy, um, you know, education even of of food systems, yeah. um, especially in this day and age when so many cultures and countries are moving towards this sort of mass production. But I think we're coming around again uh, and realizing the power of local. So I really champion that you're doing, you know, what you're doing um, and bringing that back to to the next generation that's going to carry that forward. So, exactly. so thank you. And we'll talk more. Um, but a quick introduction with you, Kim. Sure. Um, I'll scoot over this way. I, uh, you know, I'm much less of a grower than Margiana, but I was certainly inspired by my mom and grandmother who, who were growers and as a kid, mm -hmm. you know, I had plants at home and grew things and yeah. that really got under my skin, really affected me. Yeah. And when I started working in journalism, um, shortly after, you know, earlier in my career, um, for an environment news show, the uh, food and agriculture was the thing that I really gravitated mm -hmm. toward. And, um, have you know attended to that those subjects in that context and since then have done some freelancing um, a few years ago writing for uh, Edible Boston. Edible and Boston is such a beautiful yes, magazine, isn't it? Isn't isn't it? I could wallpaper my whole room with that. There's, <laughs> it's such a gorgeous right. and well-written magazine too. It's, I it's really, really like it. a great outlet I think for what's going on um, in this area. Um, and then in late uh, 2011, I was hired by the Cambridge Community Center, mm -hmm. which um, is in the Riverside neighborhood, mm -hmm. and um, was beginning to get more involved in um, food culture and supporting healthy eating and living mm -hmm. in our community. Um, they began uh, uh, being a spot for CSAs to drop off their goods and to cultivate customers. And just um, for a quick, uh, to, to explain CSAs for those out there who may not know it. Um, yes, of course. These are like your subscription farm, mm -hmm. in a sense, where you, you enter in with the farmer into sharing the risk of the season, and in exchange, you get a weekly basket of goods. Uh, so actually, I did with, one. I did one this summer for the first time with um, Red Fire Farms, and I know yeah. there's so many others, and we really, there are so many, we really mm -hmm. enjoyed actually having that, and honestly, taking off the pressure of going to the grocery store. Yes, the food comes to you. <sighs> it right? comes. Yeah, I mean, we pick it up. We, you know, <clears throat> it, it up. I, I just finished the summer um, run, just finished, and we're away for the 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 you know the initial winter, the fall and winter run. Um, but I'm looking to do the deep winter yes, again. So it's, much, it's so much better food. So much food. that grows here, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, you know, the C Cambridge Community Center is also mm -hmm. a drop-off point for food for free. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's Tuesdays that they come and mm -hmm. people come and, and are able to get uh, wonderful food there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the center saw fit to open a winter farmer's market, which... Mm -hmm. Um, some surrounding towns had, but which Cambridge did not. So how long has it been around? We, uh, in January 2015, we'll be starting our fourth season. So we've okay, done three, okay. three winter seasons. Mm -hmm. We're open on Saturdays, January through April, mm -hmm. 10 to 2, at the Community Center, which is just down Western Avenue. I've been. I love it. I mean, we live in Cambridgeport, so... So that's where I've been in the winters. I mean, I only moved here a year ago and I already have been there a bunch of times last winter mm -hmm. and right. it's a great space and you know, you'd think... And yes, it's indoors. It's indoors. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you can stamp the snow off your boots at the door and then go in and there's music and food and it's such such a nice sense of community, um, yes, especially in the winter. That you know? is the idea is that yes, it's a place where you can come and do your grocery shopping, 
um, and it's for anyone. There's no subscription or membership mm -hmm. or any anything required. It's open to everyone. Um, uh, but it's also a social space. Yeah. There is music. There are activities mm -hmm. for uh, I've seen kids, kids and doing adults. the music with the I think it's Professor T yes. that comes in there mm -hmm. sometimes, and it's just really nice to to have that sense of community, which I think. Food is a huge part it of that is. bringing together. And to we people. provide seating in front of our market stage, and people just come and they get a cup of coffee and they sit and they listen, they visit with their friends. Mm -hmm. So, like, you don't even have to buy food there, but you can come and oh, be. But you, but you'll <laughs> I want know to. I will. You'll want to, but you can simply come and yeah. enjoy the scene and spend a winter's Saturday yeah. Um, yeah. being with friends and. and uh, and visiting. I tasted some great artisanal uh, Italian cheeses. Mm -hmm. I forget yes, his Wolf name. Wolf Meadow Farm. That's right, Wolf Meadow Farm. Just, and I found it about new producers as well. Not new, but one that I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. um, and it, at both farmers markets, you know, I take yeah. a walk through and some are familiar, which I love. And then there's always like one or two, which like, oh, I didn't even know there was someone who was yes. doing this and right here. And then mm -hmm. you meet them themselves. It's not through... A giant pyramid right. of you know someone way off here that's making something and someone way off there that's purchasing it and you never actually see a face and a name that connects those two things and I really like that experience of being handed my mozzarella that was made that morning yes. by the gentleman who's giving it to yes. me yes it's very really, nice it's very direct it's very powerful yeah. I mean I think for me it, it's definitely and we've each sell. brought some of the things from our markets Ooh, see our beautiful today. market stand here I love this and there's so much yeah. more too of course this is just a little sample yeah 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 so I want to really talk about um what let's talk about snap a bit what is the snap program and how does it relate to what the farmers markets locally are now trying to do yes of course yeah um well from the beginning our market and probably yours as well margiana is there was a fundamental commitment to making the market accessible to um, all kinds of people on mm -hmm. all kinds of budgets mm -hmm. um i think people do think of farmers markets as being pricey um yes you'll find um some things that are more costly and mm -hmm. others that are not. I mean, I think we all have a, a food budget mm -hmm. and we spend it in different ways, mm -hmm. but at our markets you'll find basic ingredients at uh, reasonable prices and you'll find fancier things as mm -hmm. well. But um, getting to SNAP, this is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, which is the newish name for what used to be called food stamps. The food stamps. So these are typically for uh, populations that are perhaps economically challenged or nutritionally challenged? Right. It's the federal food assistance program mm -hmm. that um, is it, it, income qualified, right? So okay. if you meet the qualifications, mm -hmm. you can uh, receive some food assistance. But it's And so it helps people to buy their groceries and, mm -hmm. and buy good food. But in truth, there's, there's, it's not really that much money to buy the food uh, to, that you're um, allocated mm -hmm. for food. And so um, what uh, the Harvard market and our market and a number of public health leaders in town and community development folks have done, um, Mass Farmers Market, mm -hmm. is to get together and raise matching money. Okay. And so if you come to our market and you have 10 or even $15 in s SNAP benefits that you would like to spend, mm -hmm. Um, through this matching fund, we can then offer you another fifteen dollars. Oh wow! So that your fifteen dollars becomes thirty dollars mm -hmm. um, to spend at them. the farmers market. Mm -hmm. That's right. At that, and so they're participating markets that that are part of this program. That's right. Um, and it's called the SNAP. Well, match. The local our local group is called the Cambridge SNAP Match Coalition. Okay. And right now it includes the uh, farmers market at Harvard, mm -hmm. the Cambridge Winter Farmers Market, and one of the the Monday market in in Central Square mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. behind H Mart, yeah, H -Mart which yep. is a Massachusetts farmers market market. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay, so that's really great. So I mean, you've cleared up a few things here. One is this idea that farmers markets are inherently way more expensive, and that I don't think is entirely true. Um, and if they are at whatever point. I actually think that that's a fairer representation of what things cost to make, if I can be so bold to say that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but the kind of subsidies, and again, we're talking about very giant socioeconomic and political machinery that's 
really driving down the cost of um, mass-made goods in supermarkets, many of which are contributing then to health problems, obesity, and costs down the line. So you may not pay much up front um, at the supermarket for certain things, but there's a, there's a hidden cost. Mm-hmm that comes later and then there's nobody to take responsibility mm-hmm, for that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know so i think there's something really valuable in seeing here we're offering you access to fresh healthy foods doubling your dollar basically and um making that that those hidden costs later you're trying to sort of mitigate those and bring That's those right. down and, and another point is that it actually costs more to produce food in new england for a number of reasons mm-hmm. including that our land values are much higher, so uh-huh. you know farmers have to pay more for the land that they're using, mm-hmm. um, and the cost of living is much higher. Yeah. Um, so you know what we often are struggling with is this sort of gap where farmers and producers sort of struggle to uh, have an economically viable business and make ends meet, and mm-hmm. you know be able to pay themselves a fair living wage, while at the same time that food. Um, you know, is a little bit pricier, and yeah. there has to be a premium to help sort of even things, even things out. out. Mm-hmm. Um, so this comes, I mean, driven by this overall belief that there is some benefit to supporting the local economy. Because if right. that fundamental belief wasn't there, I think the whole thing would collapse, and everyone could just join some giant corporation, and and then it all kind of comes to bits. But I think people like you are the ones upholding that very strong belief in supporting a local economy, you know. Right, and you know, that's sort of this idea of an economic multiplier effect that, um, you know, dollars spent in our local community will continue to do good there. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that one of the great things about this um, SNAP match program is that it's the money that's making up that difference Mm -hmm. is actually from by and large from residents of the local Cambridge community that have donated okay. funds okay. into this pool that then allow other people um, who maybe don't have access to, to, you know, to sort of excess funds to be able to pay a little bit more for a higher quality, mm-hmm. you know, local product. Um, it allows them to do that and that money is still staying in the local mm-hmm. community because it's being spent with local vendors. Um, so That's it's great. continuing to do good yeah. um, in Cambridge. I mean, I really feel like in organizing this farmer's market that not only is it sort of like putting on a party every Saturday, but it's <laughs> also, it is supporting um, a regional economy and also land protection, mm-hmm. right? Because if farmers can't make money doing what they do, um, they're not going to do it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I mean. It's a big system. Like, we, it, right. it takes support from all sides. You need the producers being supported and then the buyers also being supported and not just a small pool of buyers but by doing this it's almost like evening leveling the playing field somewhat um, mm-hmm. and it's really interesting uh, I, I think before this conversation I was a little unclear but now it's becoming much more clear how that one-to-one matching is happening uh, and it's it's kind of it reminds me of how uh, many times employers will do one-to-one matching for retirement funds mm-hmm. you know like you mm-hmm. put away a certain amount and they will give you like dollar for dollar for that mm-hmm. and this to me is much more delicious, you know? <laughs> you're, you're taking people who have the, you know, opportunity to, of some excess funds that they can donate and they're also willing to do so and um, invested in the process. And they're putting that money in and allowing then others who need that little gap made up, yes. you know? They're kind of joining the dots here and it's joining, it's like a big happy circle. Kind yes. of people <laughs> holding each other's hands and helping them uh, get access to food that they wouldn't, so they would otherwise be going to like the giant mega mart somewhere. Yes. Well, I think we, I also want to acknowledge um, the city of Cambridge has contributed to this fund okay. this year as well, and um, mm-hmm. Cambridge Trust and you know some other local businesses that mm-hmm. have really um, joined in with us to make this happen, as well as lots of individuals. Oh, wow. And That's you know, great. I would say our only regret about it is that. We do have to draw a line somewhere, and we have we draw it around that you know okay the qualifying uh, condition is that you're part of this SNAP match you're part of mm-hmm. the you're receiving SNAP benefits, but there are lots of people in between you know who are who are totally comfortable and able to sh- uh, uh, shop at the farmers market and it feels like part of their culture and part of their food budget and it's not a problem, and uh, folks on SNAP who are um, 
were trying to help along. And then there are lots of people in the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I've, I've been to community meetings where um, people have asked me, well, you know, well, what about me? I'm a veteran. Or what about me? I'm, I am, uh, uh, have a low income, but I don't qualify for SNAP. And, um, um, and I hear that, you know, I think that's a really valid point. Yeah, yeah. And yet at this moment, this is what we're able to do. And perhaps you have down to start the line, somewhere. That's right. Yeah, yeah. How long has this program been in existence? Well, um, our market uh, had it, has had it for the last three years. Okay. And actually, we're not the only ones doing this. Certainly, there is um, there are other organizations. Uh, there's Boston Bounty Bucks, mm -hmm. which does the same thing. Okay. Um, there's an organization in Connecticut, mm -hmm. um, Michelle Nishan's group, called <laughs> I'm forgetting <laughs> that is a, uh, sort of a national leader in doing uh -huh. this. Um, um, uh, the folks in Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, I know in New York also they have it. I'm mm -hmm. not sure in California, but I did a little bit of um, snooping around online and just I found that yes. there's pockets in, in places that, and it seems to be a growing thing now to be able yes. to start doing that, which is great. I mean, it's growing, it's not waning, but it's, yes. it's something that's, that's there's happening. There's a pretty now. broad recognition that this is needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in different places or different mechanisms for making this happen. So we have some little goodies here. Let's, mm -hmm. um, le let's talk about how this actually works. Uh, if we may. So sure. what should I start with? How about these? Yeah. Is this good? Yeah. Um, so, so look ahead, it's like Monopoly money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This so that's one dollar. Um, that's what people who come to the Harvard um, University Farmers Market receive when they bring their EBT card and I'll swipe it for let's say five dollars and mm -hmm. then I would hand them ten of these uh, sort of market bucks that they can go okay, and so spend. These are, the, these are what they can spend at the market. Exactly. And EBT, by EBT again, let's... Uh, so SNAP. Oh, so SNAP and EBT. What does yeah. EBT stand for? It's Electronic like Benefits it. Transfer. So that's okay. it's the like currency. the It's like the ATM yeah. card that you oh, get okay. when you're part of the program. Mm -hmm. So you get a certain amount allocated to you on that card. Mm -hmm. So say it was $10. Um, that they say they're going to spend mm -hmm. in exchange for which they get twenty dollars worth of market money, market right. bucks, market money. What do you right. call it? Yeah. Um, so they can, and then and then all the vendors at the market have to accept can these. accept this, mm -hmm. and then um, as as payment exactly. And then at the end of the day. Uh, the market manager goes around and collects from all of the vendors, mm -hmm. um, you know, and writes it down, and then periodically they settle up. They settle, settle up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me just show this real quick. These are cute. Yeah, and one of the one of the um, rich, rich, rich. <laughs> one of the accomplishments I'll say so far of this coalition yeah. is that you know instead of having th three different markets that either did or didn't have a match or mm -hmm. had a different match offer all three markets are now offering the same mm -hmm. match and that is $15 in SNAP becomes $30 in market cash. So it's always one to one. Yes and right now Lovely. we've gotten to uh, 15 equals 30 and our, our next goal is to get to 20 equals 40. Mm -hmm. And so we are, uh, you know, we are we welcome additional donations from individuals sure. or businesses that would like to contribute. Um, and we have a CrowdRise site if you're motivated to do oh, that. Oh yeah, let's show that's this. That's shown on this flyer. So if you want to help out um, this incredible work and and you know, basically feed your neighbors healthier that's food right. in the community, you can actually give some money towards um, the SNAP match coalition let me show this up close here if you can see that is that upside down that is upside down here we go and i can post this on my website as well i will sure. post a link to this so you can see i'm unable to rotate well there we here we go so there at mm -hmm. the bottom it so says at the bottom crowdrise.com slash afford fresh food so go to that website and for every ten dollars you donate a family um on food assistance gets twenty dollars at participating markets of food. Right. So, what is the maximum? Per, is there a maximum per visit? It's is that 15, 15? That's fifteen for thirty. So they can use fifteen of their EBT mm -hmm. um, funds and get thirty dollars. But thirty dollars is a decent amount. Yes, you can you, know, you can buy you know several good meals worth mm -hmm. of food. Mm -hmm. And and uh, one sort of related thing that we did this year at the Harvard Farmers Market is. Um, like the Cambridge Farmers Market, we do a lot of programming, you know, live music and guest mm -hmm. chefs and 
uh, you know, we have the library come and read children's stories and things like mm -hmm. that. Um, and a few times we've, we've really focused and asked the guests, the, the chefs who came, to, to demo a recipe that could be made with ingredients from the market for under $10 it. for oh, a family Oh, that's of four. fabulous. That is fabulous. And then fabulous. also um, gave out the recipe. And those recipes came from, there's a Snap cookbook online oh, great. Um, that has a lot of really great recipes um, tailored to items that you would find at a farmer's uh -huh. market um, with the idea that all of the meals cost less than ten dollars for a you know, I love meal it. for I love four. It. I think um, um, I, I got in touch with you guys through well, if I backtrack it, it's through Rosa Ruda, mm -hmm. um, who's uh, a big proponent of the, the local food day celebration. And um, she was telling me the, a, a similar story of where they had, uh, you know, um, I think it was like a community meeting of, uh, of a couple of different food pantries. And they were all kind of talking about what they did with um, the excess food that they ended up with. Mm -hmm. And there were certain things that they tended to keep having excess of. And they were wondering if it was a supply and demand problem, but in fact, they figured out it was a cooking problem, right. an education issue, in fact, that that a lot of people, they could take the stuff, but they just didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And so bringing in chefs to help or, you know, someone who knows what you can do with this, maybe it's a strange vegetable. I got so many things this summer in my <laughs> farm share that it was fascinating to, you know, and I'm a cook myself and that's what I do. I do food education. Um, so even then for me, it was, it was fascinating to, to come across these new things and then find new ways to cook them. And especially if you're feeding a family of four, right. you know, mm -hmm. within a certain budget to know how to maximize the nutritional value as well as the caloric benefit yes. that you can get from yeah. that food within a certain budget. It, I think that's really valuable. And, and another thing, um, you know, I think we often sort of, uh, simplify the problem mm -hmm. to say, Whoop. sorry. <laughs> um, we often simplify the problem to say that the, the big issue is affordability, but often it's really um, also physical access um, to, to a place that sells fresh produce. Uh -huh. um, and that's you know, one place that farmers markets um, you know, really help out. But it's also having time to prepare mm. stuff because yeah. you know, yeah. many families you know, with you know, parents working a lot of hours and yep. you know, children are busy and all of these yeah, other yeah, things, yeah. it's really hard to have time to actually cook a meal with you know produce that you buy at a market so so i mean check it out it's uh, this is the cambridge market for, uh, with the winters farmers market this runs from january through january 3rd is our opening day january 10 a.m it's I coming will be around sooner this than time. you think <laughs> i know <laughs> this is my first january that i'm going to be here so oh, wow. so i look forward to that and then harvard farmers market is that um we go until Thanksgiving. To Thanksgiving. Every Tuesday. Every so, Tuesday. Every yeah. Tuesday. So go check them out. We have this beautiful little farm stand here. We have some some goodies. Um, what do, what do you have over here? Let's. We have a couple minutes left, real <laughs> sure. quick. So. Uh, yeah. So one thing. Um, our accused of vendor. Accused nuts is. Our, yeah. Is at both of our markets. Yeah, at both of our markets. So um, accused nuts is based in Somerville, and um, they make delicious nuts sweet and savory options i've seen their offices they're fabulous um this is one of my favorites it's a, a rosemary uh sea salt almonds and cashews Ooh. um so i'll <laughs> go ahead and May let you I taste. <laughs> taste some let's take my hand here but these are beautiful i've seen these guys around in a lot of places and that's that's great do you like some? i don't mind if i do <laughs> mm. and before All i forget right. i just want to thank you guys for coming on the show absolutely and yeah sharing this bounty of knowledge and produce with us happy to be um, here really great work that these guys are doing